Imagine a world where the lifeblood of every smartphone, every AI lab, every advanced defense system no longer depends on a single foundry giant. Picture the shockwaves that would ripple through supply chains, boardrooms, and capitals when an unexpected player stakes its claim on the bleeding edge of microchip technology. Until very recently, that scenario seemed unfathomable. Yet here we are, standing at the dawn of a radically different era. Semiconductor Manufacturing International Corporation, long viewed as a determined but perpetually one generation behind, has quietly mastered the two nanometer node. The implications are nothing short of seismic. For decades, the insatiable march towards smaller transistors and greater energy efficiency was dictated by two relentless competitors, TSMC and Samsung. Armed with fleets of EUV lithography machines costing hundreds of millions apiece, their roadmaps advanced from 7 nanometers to 5 nanometers to 3 nanometers with painstaking precision and equally painstaking expense. Conventional wisdom held that any challenger lacking direct access to ASML's latest scanners and European optics would forever be relegated to the technological backwaters. Yet SMIC's path has been anything but conventional. Pressure often reveals ingenuity rather than weakness. When stringent export controls cut off SMIC's EUV supply and imposed draconian limits on advanced equipment, the company responded not with capitulation, but with an audacious gamble to reinvent key aspects of the manufacturing process itself. Over the past three years, a network of domestic suppliers and research institutes collaborated under unprecedented urgency, refining deep UV multi-patterning techniques, pioneering new high-K dielectric materials, and even retrofitting legacy DUV scanners with custom optics. Meanwhile, AI-driven inspection tools developed in-house provided real-time feedback on wafer defects that would have meant project-ending setbacks elsewhere. What emerged from this crucible is a testament to the power of necessity. Verifiable, market-ready 2 nanometers chips, shipping today in Chinese-designed processors destined for everything from hyperscale AI clusters to next-generation autonomous vehicles. The proof comes not from marketing slides, but from third-party teardown reports. Laboratories in Europe and North America, initially skeptical, have dissected these new chips under electron microscopes, confirming transistor pitches firmly at the 2 nanometer specification. Performance benchmarks reveal up to a 2.5 times boost in AI inference speeds alongside a 30% reduction in power consumption compared to industry standard 5 nanometers designs. For applications where latency and energy efficiency decide winners and losers, from real-time language models to edge devices in remote defense installations. These numbers are game changers. Suddenly, a strategic choke point once wielded exclusively by the West has been neutralized. That realization sends shockwaves far beyond factory floors. In capitals around the world, intelligence agencies and policymakers are scrambling to reassess long-held assumptions. Export controls designed to throttle SMIC's progress have, in effect, amplified its urgency and galvanized a level of public-private cooperation rarely seen outside wartime. National foundry initiatives once conceived as a decades-long endeavor now face pressure to deliver world-class nodes in months, not years. Billions of dollars in subsidies, tax incentives, and R&D grants will pour into domestic fabs as governments seek to rebuild or expand facilities capable of rivaling SMIC's breakthrough. Yet even this deluge may lag behind the pace of change. Once a technological barrier shatters, it unleashes a cascade of innovation that no amount of funding can fully contain. At the same time, global supply chains are fracturing into two parallel ecosystems. Customers in China, long beholden to foreign suppliers for advanced nodes, now enjoy a homegrown alternative that can fuel AI farms, 5G infrastructure, and electric vehicle brainware without Western approval. Meanwhile, Western companies must decide whether to accelerate partnerships with alternative foundries, where the jury is still out on long-term reliability, or double down on domestic projects that may never catch up in time. The resulting bifurcation threatens to drive up costs, complicate logistics, and hamper interoperability, especially for multinational corporations that operate across both spheres. In effect, the chip shortage of the past decade is morphing into a geopolitical stalemate, with each side racing to secure its supply under the banner of national security. Perhaps the most profound consequence of SMIC's 2 nanometers success is the redefinition of technological sovereignty. A nation once regarded as a follower has reclaimed its agency in the most critical foundation of modern digital life. 
No longer does the threat of supply chain disruption wield the same leverage. Instead, China and its partners can chart their own course in AI research, quantum computing, and advanced telecommunications. This newfound autonomy extends into military and critical infrastructure domains, where cutting-edge semiconductors underpin everything from radar systems to encrypted communications. In that context, the phrase, no TSMC, no problem, transcends catchy rhetoric. It becomes a stark declaration of strategic independence. The West's response will shape the next chapter of the semiconductor saga. Some experts believe that renewed collaboration among democratic allies could accelerate a shared supply chain framework, pooling resources to develop a truly open architecture fab. Others warn that mounting distrust will lead to decoupling, with each block guarding its innovations behind protective tariffs and technology embargoes. Either path carries profound risks. Cooperation risks revealing trade secrets, while decoupling threatens to fracture global standards and inflate costs. Meanwhile, corporations caught in the crossfire face wrenching decisions about where to manufacture, which technologies to adopt, and how to hedge against future shocks. None of this drama will play out overnight. Building a fully equipped, world-class fab remains a multi-year, multi-billion dollar endeavor, even with the most generous government support. But the real lesson of SMIC's achievement is that conventional timelines no longer apply when national will is mobilized. History is replete with examples of breakthroughs catalyzed by constraint, Manhattan Project accelerations, wartime innovations in radar and rocketry, even penicillin production during World War II. The chip revolution unfolding today is of similar magnitude. A technology once monopolized by a select few is being democratized under the pressure of geopolitical rivalry. For viewers pondering what this means for their daily lives, the impacts are both immediate and far-reaching. Imagine AI-powered language tutors running locally on your smartphone, consuming a fraction of the power they do now. Picture autonomous vehicles navigating city streets with millimeter precision sensors and on-chip neural networks that learn and adapt in real time. Envision secure, quantum-resistant communications embedded in consumer devices without relying on foreign-made components. Each of these scenarios moves closer to reality when two nanometers chips become broadly available domestically produced, and decoupled from traditional supply chain constraints. Looking ahead, the race will only intensify. TSMC and Samsung are doubling down on research into gate all-around transistor architectures and extreme ultraviolet enhancements, targeting sub-1.5 nm nodes. SMIC, for its part, has signaled ambitions to explore novel materials like graphene and 2D semiconductors, as well as proprietary lithography techniques that could further narrow the gap or even leapfrog established players. The coming decade promises to redefine what we consider possible in manufacturing precision, computational power, and energy efficiency. What once seemed like the final frontier, two nanometers, is now just the opening act. Critically, this isn't just a battle of machines and materials. It's a contest of innovation ecosystems. Silicon Valley universities, European research consortia, and Asian industrial clusters will vie for talent, IP licensing, and standard-setting influence. Startups with unconventional ideas, whether in nanophotonics, bio-integrated electronics, or quantum transduction, may find new pathways to commercialization as the dominant paradigm shifts. In essence, the chip war is morphing into a broader war for the future of technology itself. As you reflect on these developments, consider where you see the pendulum swinging. Will the world coalesce around new, shared platforms that bridge the East-West divide? Or are we destined for a prolonged era of technological bifurcation, where compatibility and collaboration give way to parallel but incompatible ecosystems? And most importantly, how will your industry, be it AI, telecommunications, automotive, or healthcare, adapt to a landscape where the fundamental building blocks of compute power are no longer under a single thumb? Share your predictions, your concerns, and your what-if scenarios in the comments below. Are you excited by the promise of diversified innovation, or apprehensive about losing the efficiency of a unified supply chain? Which companies or countries do you think will emerge as the underdog heroes, or the new monopolists, in this unfolding drama? Your insights may well shape the conversation that decides how this story unfolds.